Hi, this is Robert Poletic, the owner of Brutal Iron Gym. I was recently asked how to create a chest growth workout with only using bands and dumbbells. So I thought I would share those tips in today's video. When it comes to bands and building bigger muscles, they really don't work. <laughs> uh, bands are best used for challenging small muscles and doing kind of like preparation movements, dynamic warm-ups. They're best used for corrective therapies. You're not gonna find somebody who built huge, big muscles using only bands. They might say that if they sell bands, <laughs> but that's not the case. So bands, what they are helpful for is those corrective therapies, maybe changing the resistance profile of a movement. So for example, I made a recent video about how to use bands ac across a squat rack to do band assisted pull-ups. They help with things like that. But if you think about using bands to build a bigger chest, if you were to set like a band across your back, so if I do this and now I do like uh, chest presses and push-ups, it's worthless. That's just a bunch of nuisance and uh, annoyance to try to get all this stuff to work. It's not going to add enough resistance that really matters. So I wouldn't waste a lot of my time using bands with the idea that I can use them for growth. So what I do use bands for, I do have them myself, which is why I have this one. <laughs> and I have clients buy them and use them all the time. We use them for those uh, corrective therapies and movement preparation. So if we think about growing the chest, one of the things that we need when we're doing a proper chest press is a nice, strong, contracted and held, stabilized upper back. We want our shoulder blades to be pulled together slightly and then pulled down towards our hips. So you're thinking of like scapular retraction and then depression. So you're trying to squeeze your shoulder blades together and then pull them down towards the hips. If you have a big arch, squeezing your shoulder blades together is gonna to be even more important. If you have a flat arch or kind of a flat presser, flat back bencher, then you're gonna be focusing more on the depression part rather than the retraction. So you wanna practice a balance between those two things. So we can actually use the bands for that. One of the examples is just a simple band to pull apart. So I would grab the band at about shoulder width apart and then I'm gonna think of pulling the band apart. Make sure I don't smack my hand. <laughs> but I wanna think about pulling the band apart. And while I'm doing this, I can squeeze my shoulder blades together. So if I turn to the side, I would think of pulling my shoulder blades back and when I pull the band apart. So this is a band pull apart and it lets me feel what it would feel like to squeeze my shoulder blades together. So this is a way to kind of activate and warm up those back muscles. You can use it to kind of stretch your chest. Sometimes people do what's called a band uh, dislocation. So they'll rotate the band over their body like this and this is supposed to help open up the chest. It doesn't really do a great job but you'll see people do that. Band pull aparts are good if you want to mimic a press. Rather than keeping your arms, uh, you're never going to want to lock out your arm. You want to keep it slightly bent when you're doing that band pull apart. But you can even just keep your forearms forward like you would for a press. And just think of pulling that band and squeezing the shoulder blades together. So you can actually mimic the pressing motion, thinking of keeping that tension, pulling the band apart and squeezing your shoulders back. So just playing around with it like this, I already got a decent pump, my shoulders are burning, everything's waking up. So that's what bands are really mostly used for, are for corrective therapies. You can do internal external rotators. So if I wanna work on uh, shoulder health, I could just simply take a band off of a rack or a doorknob, and then I could do like internal external rotation. This can help strengthen the shoulder. Now it does help strengthen these muscles because they're relatively small. I would then flip around to the other side. I could even do like internal rotation, but usually people aren't too weak in that. It's really external that people are mostly weak at. So that's what you would use bands for. Uh, I, I seem dismissive about bands. I do use them and I like them, but they're not gonna lead towards a growth. So what we're gonna do in the rest of the video is talk about what we can do using just dumbbells to promote chest growth. The first dumbbell focused tip that we would look for for creating chest growth using only dumbbells 
is to start with chest flies. This helps us isolate our chest away from our triceps and that can help us get our chest pre-fatigued, get the chest damaged, get it beat up, get the tissues already fatigued before we then go into presses. What commonly happens and what hinders chest growth for people when they do presses is that something fails before the chest does. Maybe their triceps fail, maybe their ability to stabilize big heavy dumbbells fails, and those happen before the chest really gets fully fatigued, therefore the chest doesn't grow well. When you do chest flies first and you pre-fatigue the chest fibers, you're now hopefully going to ensure that when you move into presses, the chest fails before the triceps or fails before the stabilization problems, so that way you maximize the chest stimulus and therefore you can better maximize chest growth. So the first tip is to start with flies before presses if you want to increase your chest growth when using dumbbells. The second tip we have for how to increase chest growth using dumbbells is to make sure that when we press with our dumbbells, we are keeping the chest as the main focus. This means that when I'm pressing, I actually want my forearms to stay perpendicular to the ground Sometimes when people press, they'll come straight down towards their chest or their shoulders and their forearms actually are angled inward and then they press up from there. This is going to be a lot of triceps. Whereas if I think of keeping my forearms perpendicular to the floor, I'm going to come out wider at the bottom and then squeeze up. You don't want to come in so far at the top that the dumbbells would fall inward or that they're above, directly above your shoulder joint, definitely not inside your shoulder joint. You want to stay a little bit outside of your shoulder joint. So you want to come down nice and wide and press up and in, but staying outside of the shoulder joint. If you press with your forearm staying perpendicular, meaning you're coming down wide and then squeezing the chest up and in at the top, you're going to increase your chest recruitment and that's going to help you better focus on chest growth. The third tip we can use is when we're doing our kind of warm-up sets of presses, we can change our hand position with the dumbbell where we hold on the inside edge of the dumbbell, leaving more of the weight of the dumbbell on the outside. That helps keep more of that outward tension on the chest muscle. Your hands are always wanting to kind of be pulled to the side, like out away from you. So it's almost like you're blending a fly and a press together. So that's actually something I'll do when I'm warming up my presses. And then when I get to my heavier weights, I'll go ahead and grab in more of a neutral position. And that way I can focus on maximum weight, maximum strength, which by this point, by doing flies first, having that hand position during the warmups, this nice wide, pressing pattern during the presses. We're really going to be pre-fatiguing. We're going to be damaging the chest. So then when we get to our heaviest sets of presses, we want to get rid of anything that limits what we can do. Now that the chest is pre-fatigued, we know it's going to fail fight first or it's most likely to fail first. So we want to go ahead and press with everything we got. We can even bring that pathway back more to a, a typical straight up and down and let the triceps help push the chest even further into fatigue. A fourth tip we have is to control our eccentric speed when we're doing flies and presses. So we want to always be under control when the chest muscle is stretching under weight load. One of the ways we can do that is to move slower during that portion of the range of motion than we do in the contraction portion. So if you think of a, a dumbbell press, when I'm lowering the dumbbells, the chest muscle is extending, that's the eccentric portion. When the, chest mu when the dumbbells are going up, the chest muscles are contracting, that's the concentric portion. The eccentric portion is contributable to the most amount of structural damage to the fibers. And this would be true of any exercise we do. So we want to control the eccentric portion as much as we can. If we over control it, it limits how much weight we can use. If we don't control it at all, we don't get any damage. So what's a happy little medium <laughs> is typically an eccentric count of somewhere between two to four count, like a two to four count. So it'd be like one, two, or it could be three, one, two, three, or even a four, one, two, three, 
four. If we go longer than that, sometimes I'll use a five count for certain clients, especially if they count fast. <laughs> but I usually stay within a two to five count. And then the concentric portion, you would just want to come up as fast as you can while staying controlled. You don't want to overextend at the top. Make sure your chest stays in control of the movement. So we can use a slowed eccentric rep tempo of a two, three, four, or even a five count. But then when we get to the heaviest stuff, go ahead and you know, let that be a little faster so you can get the weight load. But this is something we want to be mindful of is that we're always feeling the chest during the eccentric portion of any chest exercise. A fifth and final tip for the video is that we can also end with another fly variation. So you would start with flies, start with then go into presses, then end with flies. The idea of ending with flies is just to find anything that might be left in the chest. If you do the first flies very well, the presses very well, there probably isn't going to be anything left, but you can still experiment, play around with a couple sets of another variation of a fly and just see if there's anything left. If you're wrecked, be done. If you think there might be something left, get a couple hard sets in, then you can be done. <laughs> so with the fly variations, we want to create some variety between the two uh, since we're doing flies in the beginning and the end of the workout. We can play with our back angle on the bench. You can do 10% uh, decline, you can do flat, you can do uh, most benches use at fit, move at 15 degree increments. So you can do a 15 degree incline, a 30 degree incline. A 45, you're going to start to over recruit the front side of your shoulders. So typically the best angles for the chest are going to be minus 10 because usually when people go down, when the benches go down, they tend to go down in like 10 degrees. Don't tell me, like, it's weird. So it goes down in 10, but it goes up by 15. I know. Uh, so the first notch down, <laughs> whatever your bench does, the first notch down is probably a pretty good angle for the chest. It's going to mostly emphasize the outer and lower portion of the chest. Flat is going to still get kind of the outer and lower portion. 10 or 15 degrees, whichever your bench allows, incline is going to start to get more of the middle of the chest. And then if you can get to like a 30 degree incline, that starts to get more of the upper chest. So you can play with the back angles, depending on which part of the chest that you want to focus on the most. And then you can also play with uh, your stabilization and kind of foot position. Sometimes when I'm doing flies, I'll have my feet down the ground like I normally do. Other times I'll put my feet up on the end of the bench and that forces me to have to go even slower and be more controlled because I need to have that extra control to stabilize myself. Uh, during the flies. Uh, so those are kind of like two easy variations you can play with. And then a third variation is no bench at all, just doing floor flies. Um, these are great for an overload because if you can't come up, your upper arm hits the floor, you're fine, you just let go of the dumbbells, you're fine. So it's a nice way to kind of challenge a heavy weight load for chest flies is doing floor flies. And that is a great variation as well. So those are all five tips that should hopefully be able to help you build a bigger, stronger chest, even if all you have available to you are dumbbells for your workout. If you have any questions, put them in the comment section below, and thank you for watching.